Now it's six o'clock. Oregon Republicans threaten another walkout, and some say they won't come back to the job without a fight. Send bachelors and come heavily armed. I'm not going to be a political prisoner in the state of Oregon. It's just that simple. Those words come as the state Senate prepares to vote on a cap-and-trade climate bill. Also this morning, Portland Police is dealing with a critical officer shortage. So the Bureau is ending the college degree requirement for new hires. Plus, pilot Sully Sullenberger, who famously landed a plane on the Hudson River, blasts Boeing for its troubled 737 MAX planes. Our current system of aircraft design and certification has failed us. What Sully says needs to happen before the MAX fleet flies again. And preserving the Pacific Crest Trail. In a new edition of Those Who Serve, we'll meet the super volunteer who's given more than a thousand hours each year so the rest of us can hike safely. Those stories and more are coming up in your six o'clock hour of KGW News at Sunrise which starts right now. And we start your Thursday with this live look at Willamette Falls. Fishermen know it's shad season. If you're not familiar though, they're like herring. So fishing is just one of the cool things that you can do this summer. Reporter Tim Gordon is out on the water right now and those fish are biting. We're gonna talk to him in just a couple of minutes. Well, good morning, thanks for joining us on a Thursday. Yeah, when we checked in with them earlier, they already had a fish yeah. on the line. Yep. So, you know, yeah. no pressure, but you better get one. Tim. <laughs> By the way, I'm not that familiar with herring, Brenda. See, You're it's not? funny, you gave me that, that point. Well, it's like herring. I'm like, that doesn't help. Pickled, <laughs> pickled herring? Nothing. Oh, no, yeah. Pickled herring, yes, that clears it up. <laughs> Here we go this morning. We have some breaks in the cloud cover. We also have some showers. Really pretty shot over downtown from the Rose City camera. Early morning number, we are at 56 degrees. We're only going to warm in the 60s today, and the scattered shower chance will continue. Yesterday I said light showers. I was wrong. We're cold enough up top. We're already seeing some heavier showers. Maybe there's an isolated hailstone today. Here's Sandy. Pretty good shower rotating. Coming at you folks in Welches. And coming at you right now, Chris McGinnis. And coming right into your living room, almost. Uh, the drive on the east side. We've got trouble right now. On Northbound 205, a little fender bender action near Stark. Look at that red line on our traffic map right now. We'll throw the traffic sensors on there. Eight miles an hour, the speed as you roll north of Foster up towards Powell, give you the 3D traffic tracker. How about we give you a better look with the actual uh, ODOT cameras and you can see traffic really puttering along on that side of town. Extra time on 205 northbound through the Lentz area. Guys? Chris, thanks. Send bachelors and come heavily armed. I'm not going to be a political prisoner in the state of Oregon. Yes, yeah, some bold words from a Republican state senator. He's talking about the governor's threat of sending state police after him if he and other lawmakers walk out of the Capitol today, all in an effort to block a vote on a controversial climate change emissions bill. Put simply, the cap and trade bill means if you pollute a lot, you pay a lot of money. And supporters say that'll encourage businesses to cut down on emissions. On the flip side, though, Republicans say they're worried it could cost people their jobs in industries like timber and forestry. That's why yesterday these loggers drove to Salem from North Plains and rallied against the bill. Some lawmakers are also saying that they're not just concerned about the impact the bill would have on jobs, they're also concerned it could drive up gas prices. So we are tracking all the developments on this story in Salem throughout the morning and here on Sunrise. Christine Pitawanich will join us in the next half an hour for more on that cap and trade legislation. Also, the Portland Police Bureau says it's changing its hiring standards for police officers. As PPB struggles to fill more than 100 vacancies, candidates will only need a high school diploma or a GED. An associate's degree or military experience was required in the past. PPB is also considering letting officers have beards and tattoos above the collar. Those changes go into effect July 1st. Today, Portland State University students plan to ask the Board of Trustees to disarm campus police officers. This debate started nearly a year ago when PSU officers shot and killed Jason Washington. Washington was breaking up a fight on campus when a gun fell out of his pocket. He had a concealed carrier's license, but police shot him when he tried to pick up the weapon. The students will speak at today's 9 a.m. Board of Trustees meeting. Now two new developments in the 2016 murder of a Gresham mom. Police are charging Anastasia Hester's ex-husband Matthew Hester for allegedly orchestrating the killing. Police found Anastasia stabbed to death in her home. In 2017, police arrested Matthew's current wife, Angela McCraw Hester, for the murder. A cyclist was life flighted to the hospital after a truck 
hit him last night in Hillsboro. Police say the driver turned right from Northeast 28th to Cornell and hit the cyclist. The truck left the scene, but eventually the driver of the truck did come back. The bicyclist has serious injuries, but he is stable right now at OHSU. Police haven't said yet if the driver will be cited or charged. Those are your local headlines. Now for your morning rush, our military saying this morning a Navy drone has been shot down by an Iranian missile in international airspace. A surface to air missile hit that drone over the Strait of Hormuz. Iran says the surveillance aircraft violated their airspace. This is just the latest incident amid rising tensions over there. U.S. officials blame Iran for what they claim was an attack on two oil tankers in the Gulf of Oman. Iran is denying any involvement. Now to Sacramento, where a standoff is still underway with a man who shot and killed a police officer. That gunman killed 26-year-old Tara O'Sullivan as she was responding to a domestic disturbance call last night. The shooter is still barricaded in that home this morning as police try to negotiate his surrender. Aviation experts warning pilots they need to be detailed in their training to ensure they can handle problems in the Boeing 737 MAX jets. Retired pilot Sully Sullenberger, who landed that airliner on the Hudson River, testified at yesterday's congressional hearing. He says over 700 pilots need repeated training sessions in simulators before they can fly that jet. And that's your Morning Rush. Well, it is summer kickoff week here on Sunrise, and we're showing you some cool things you can do with your family this summer. So how about getting out on the water and doing a little fishing? That's exactly what Tim Gordon is doing <laughs> this morning. He's live for us on the Willamette River, taking us now to Willamette Falls. So Tim, you're talking shad fishing this morning. We are at a beautiful location. We'll show you the falls uh, here right now. Why don't you, Chad, give it a look. Uh, we're fishing for shad in just one of the most beautiful spots, so close to Portland here, Oregon City. I mean, this is something else. And we're with Rob Crandall with Watertime Outfitters. It's so cool of you to bring us out here and tell people about shad fishing because I'm a fisherman. And I really didn't know anything about it. This is something anybody can do, and they come out and do it with you. Absolutely. And this run is the world's largest run of American shad. There's over five million fish so far this year. Coming into the Columbia and Willamette River. That's right. That's an enormous amount of fish. It's incredible. A couple hundred thousand a day going over Bonneville Dam. I mean, that's just that's insane. And they're really fun to catch. We hope to get one on here because if you were with us in the five o'clock out about a half an hour ago, we had a couple on just like that. We've caught a half dozen, I don't know, maybe close to 10 fish yeah. since we've been out here for an hour and they're they're really fun to catch. Hey, anybody can do this, right? You can you can have a family come out here, the kids can catch these. That's it. It's fantastic for you know, new fishermen get people hooked on fishing or kids that have never done it before. It's really a lot of fun and they, they pull hard and they're, oh, I just missed one. Ah, oh, that's <laughs> all right. Try again. And we have some video we're showing too. Them. There are a lot of them and, and so the, the opportunity is great. And especially when our steelhead and salmon numbers are down, you, you know, you're not guaranteed to fish it by any means these days, this season that's so far. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So w w where do people go to, to learn about your system? Up. Uh, WatertimeOutfitters.com is is uh, where I'm at. Yeah. And uh, you know, shad are easy to catch. Get the get the fly or lure down about six to ten feet and uh, near some good current. Mm -hmm. And uh, move it, twitch it a little bit, and bam, they hit it. That's that's all it really takes. So you can do it by yourself, but if you want to come out and have a great experience, come out with Rob. He will hook you up. This is a guy. You've, you've got other guys that work with you and that's right. your company, but uh, you know, Deschutes River. You, uh, you're all over the place catching all kinds of fish. What do you enjoy most about the shad, though? Um, anybody can do it, and there's so much fun. And what a great place to do it. I yeah. mean, the iconic Willamette Falls. Yeah. And I give give Rob a shout out too, because you're taking some kids out that wouldn't go fishing this coming weekend, foster care kids. That's right. That's pretty cool. Yep. I, what made you decide to do that? Uh, I work with a company called Fly Fishing Collaborative, okay. and uh, they mobilize the fly fishing community to help impoverished kids and uh, they, they do a lot with human trafficking as well so really great folks and uh, we're gonna see some big smiles on those kids faces <laughs> no doubt you got a big smile on my face today for sure 
Rob Crandall, Watertime Outfitters, thanks a lot for your time. Man, we didn't get one on in this segment. I'm so surprised. I hope you ran some video. But <laughs> no, we, too, we were counting on we'll, it happening uh, again live. We'll keep working on it for you. <laughs> yeah. Tim, thank you. I know they got a big place. one earlier. I know, that was exciting. It brought me back, though. I did a shad fishing segment probably 14 years ago, live on TV, and that gentleman that was in the boat with Tim said the same things that the guy that I was with that morning said. They're really fun to catch. There was a lot of excitement there, and this time of the year, you should be able to get mm -hmm. a lot of shad on your line yes. over the course of a morning.